Hey folks, welcome back to the Cotswold Collectibles YouTube channel. I am Greg Brown, president of Cotswold Collectibles. Uh, the past few videos we had guest Ace Allgood talking about um, different things within the 1960s into the 1970s uh, vintage GI Joe. Um, this week we wanted to bring in David Howard. Um, David's been a good friend of mine for 20 something years. Uh, he's an avid GI Joe collector as well. He also works for us. He does our catalogs and such like that, our digital, our digital media print media and such. Uh, but David is also extremely knowledgeable about 1960s Joes, which is a weakness of mine. I'm more adventure team theme. David is a, both, but he has a vast knowledge on uh, 1964 onward um, GI Joe sets. So we brought him in today because we actually wanted to talk about the 1964 GI Joes and some of the differences um, that were going on as, as it evolved because uh, it didn't start out just one and just keep going. It started to kind of, you start seeing some changes. So um, hand it over to David. Well, what I brought on today, Greg, was some examples of some of the early issue parts. There's a lot of talk about early issue Joes and okay. sometimes early issue or first issue are confused with salesman samples. Okay. Salesman sample pieces were ones that were typically handmade and glued to cardboard and the salesman used those to go around to the different department stores to sell the G.I. Joe figure, which was a salesman sample figure. Right. There are three examples of salesman sample figures, the earliest being the branded figure, and the torso actually has Hasbro USA branded into the back of the torso or the, the chest cavity. So it's actually melted into the plastic. It, it's actually melted, like actually branded, heated and branded in there. That's one of the earliest examples. You can also tell too, because a lot of the early ones had this pinkish hue to it or right. pinkish swirl. Uh, they also had, but in addition to the branded, they had the etched version where they just took an etching tool and etched Hasbro into really? it. Really? Okay. Now on these GI Joes, these GI Joes did not have the copyright stamped on the buttocks of the Joe. Okay. Um, like you see, 99.9% .9 of the Joes have that stamped or, or molded onto that part right. of it, to the torso. So the chest cavity is the way you tell the salesman sample Joes. From the rest of them, okay. Right. Now, like I said, the salesman sample pieces were typically glued. So if you find a piece that has glue on the back of it, that's a hand, either a cloth first aid pouch or mm -hmm. a cloth cartridge belt, mm -hmm. this guy glue it was probably a salesman sample because it was glued to it was that glued cardboard, on the cardboard and took it off. Right. Took it off, okay. Right. So that's how you can identify that. Now, on when you're online and auctions and you're in different places, you see the terms... Uh, beefy hands, slotted shoulders, baby feet baby thrown feet, around pretty right. loosely. Right. And a lot of folks don't know exactly what those are. What's so I thought today what I'd do, I brought three examples of early issue Joes for my collection. They're not salesman samples, but they're just early issue. Early One issue. of the biggest identifiers of an early issue Joe is the eyeliner. They call them, they're nicknamed raccoon eye Joes mm -hmm. because they have this really heavy uh, eyeliner on the top and at the bottom. Top, you can okay. Yeah, you can really see it on these. They have the the really heavy eyeliner, almost looks like a raccoon. Right, right. Um, so the whole eye's outlined. Now, no one really knows exactly why Hasbro went from that. Either it, they didn't think it looked as attractive or maybe it was a time saver. But eventually they moved to just doing the eyebrows without the eyeliner. And this is where you can really see the difference. See the difference. Put them side by side, you can so see. So the it. eyeliner came out first, and they then when they did further production, they just removed that. Right, they removed okay. that heavy eyeliner on the bottom. So that's a telltale of an early issue figure. Okay. Uh, and the salesman, salesman sample figures also had the raccoon eyeliner, but again, they had the, they had the stamp instead of the... They had the, the uh, etched or... Heat stamp. Uh, heat stamped... Uh, chest cavity and then the torso had, did not have anything on it. Gotcha. On the regular Joes, these Joes all have the torso with it on there. So that's one of the ways to, that's one of the easiest ways is to look at the head sculpt. The second is the feet. And again, it's baby, they call them baby feet because initially when Hasbro created this, they created a foot that's very pointed and very curved on the side, not as realistic uh, to a real foot. So it's much smaller. Kind of small, yeah. It yeah. is. And and the reason it was smaller is you had the first issue boots also. Smaller. The smaller boots that were made out of rubber, rubber instead of plastic. And all these feature that. And I brought an example of a rubber boot and a and a plastic boot. And, the, and you can tell the difference of those. The, the rubber boots always had a flat sole. Mm -hmm. 
no ridge, no anything, and they always had Hong Kong circular on the hill. And they're very soft and feel more like a, they have a flat sheen to them like a rubber, right. where these are slick and shiny like a plastic. So right. they moved to that, and uh, but the rubber boots had to be discontinued because when they changed the foot design from the baby foot to the more realistic foot with the toes, this foot wouldn't fit in the rubber boot. The foot got bigger. Right, the foot got bigger, so the boot had to be different. So they went to the plastic boot, which was probably cheaper to manufacture the plastic boot than it was the rubber boot also. So right. Nobody knows for sure. I've talked with several of the people over the years at conventions that were involved in the creation of G.I. Joe, and some of this is things they've shared. Right. Um, uh, so anyway, that's another that's another first issue thing is the rubber boot versus the plastic mm -hmm. boot. Yep. Another way to tell the figure besides the head and the torso and the feet, as they have what they call beefy hands. Beef, okay. And both hands, if you look, have this uh, inner part is much thicker right. on both sides. If you take a regular hand and put it beside those, okay. you can really tell how much skinnier oh, wow. it is on the inside. You can see the difference. So that's the beefy hands. So typically a figure that has the baby feet, the heavy eyeliner, the beefy hands is an early issue figure. Right. There's one other uh, thing that, that you can tell, and it's not on all of them. Some of the salesman sample figures all had slotted shoulders right. and slotted necks. And Same what that is, I don't have an example of it, but the uh, in this piece where the wire is for the pin, for the hooks to hook on, this would have had a hole. Okay. And the reason they had the hole in there in the shoulder and the neck was so they could see where to hook the hooks right. to Make the pin. Right, make it easier for production. Make it easier because otherwise when you're restringing these joes, you know, as you know, you you got to feel around for the hook. Right, right. So in production, they could look through that hole and they could see where that is. Um, so that's that, that's kind of the examples of the figure itself right, to sure. tell what those are. And these are all things that were only in 1964. They were only in 1964. They moved from the salesman version right. to the first production issues. Right. And those all had those features. Okay. And then after that, they went to the normal head, lost the slotted shoulders. You still see some of the regular Joes show up with a slotted shoulder because they were probably just using the production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the baby feet and his feet people have changed out. Right. But... Uh, Frank and Joe did. Yeah, bit. they moved to the to the to the more regular look of what we consider the GI Joe look. So he had a pretty extreme look with those uh, raccoon eyes and the bigger hands and the. Well, yeah, feet. I mean, you can't help but notice it when you're looking at them. Right. So, so when you're identifying a figure, that's a, those are some of the telltale signs of a first issue figure. Now, I also brought along my first issue figures are not completely built with first issue parts, but they do have some first issue parts on them. Right. Uh, for instance. The, the canteens had a di were very different too. The first canteens were marked Hasbro Japan. Okay. And so they had the Hasbro Japan on there as well as the bayonets that went on the gun. They also had Japan on the blade. Really? Yeah. And la so later on, they just went to the smooth canteen. Okay. But that's a first issue canteen that says Hasbro Japan Hasbro on Japan. it. Hasbro Japan. Yeah. So, and then the, uh, the canteen pouches themselves are very different. The early issue... Uh, canteen pouches were very coarse fabric oh, okay. and you find that with a lot of the pieces on the early issue stuff some of the backpacks are the same way and so they, they moved later to a finer weave fabric and you can really see the difference in between them definitely and uh, so that's how you can tell a first issue canteen in its pouch the material okay. now one of the other things they had done too and these are mostly salesman samples uh, they had the cloth cartridge belt that they initially designed on the first salesman samples okay now, this is not an original, this is a reproduction of it, but it's a very good reproduction of how these looked. But the reason they ended up moving from the cloth sewn belt to the plastic belt was probably primarily cost. Yeah, production. Because these had to be handmade and sewn, right, right. where these were just molded and, and put together. So, yeah. so that's a you can see a real big difference between the plastic ones and the fabric ones. And these are extremely hard to come by. Normally when you find them, they are uh, they do have cardboard stuck on the back where they were glued because okay. most of them were glued onto it. So on these, obviously they, they had um, salesman samples, but did any of these actually make it into production and into circulation? Some of them did make it into circulation. Okay. Now, I don't I, I don't know how many they produced if they produced them. Right. But occasionally you will find salesman samples that 
were issued on okay. in production figures. They probably, you know, in the factories, they just grabbed what they had. Right. They had orders to get and to get out, and they were just grabbing everything. And so they were just using it at some point. They were like, hey, listen. Let's right. Go. We ran out of those, so let's go to let's these. Let's go to the new production. Same with the slotted shoulders. Right. Hey, we got slotted shoulders. Let's put those together. And so you'll see sometimes what we call Frank and Joe's. Right. Where they've got a normal head, but they've got a slotted shoulder. Right. And they might have the baby feet or one beefy hand or whatever. Yeah, because whatever they had in the production. Yeah, they, they weren't that particular with it. Um, so anyway, um, that's that's an interesting uh, piece of it is the canteens. Also, the first aid pouches. These these are really unique. The early issue first aid pouches actually were made out of cloth mm -hmm. and had a little snap, and you could actually put a bandage in there. Um, and so that that was really more realistic. But again, very time intensive. Hand sewn. Hand sewn, yeah. and it's got all that. Where they ended up moving to a plastic, plastic. first aid pouch which has a, a pouch that snaps, but it's, it doesn't open. You can't put anything right. in it. Right, it's just like a faux flap. Right, but it's something that can be molded out of plastic quickly instead of a oh, person over there sewing that and making that. So a lot of these a lot of these made it out into uh, the wild, so right. to speak. And you see these, are, they're not really common, but they're certainly more common than cartridge belts. Or right, yeah, I've seen more of those than I've ever seen. Yeah, you see, so more, so more of these made it out into there, but those are some unique pieces and you can see on these Joes, I've got cloth first aid pouches on them. Not all of them have, first, this guy has a first issue canteen and he also has a first issue belt. Now, uh, when, you, when you're talking about belts and jackets and backpacks, mm -hmm. one of the easiest ways to look at something that's an earlier issue is the sewing, the thread, the thread, the way the sewing was. They had, later on, they got really fine sewing with the belt. This belt has a really coarse thread and, and almost looks like it was sewn on a home machine right. versus something that's more commercial made. So you can see the difference. So you get a much coarser uh, thread, uh, I guess thread row is what you would call it, but you can really see it on the backpack. You go from the really fine sewing to the more rough, thicker right. uh, sewing on there. So that's one way to tell if something's a little bit more early. -ish. Real subtle, but it's right. There. It's yeah. subtle. You can t you can definitely tell this looks like it was done on a home machine versus a very fine uh, right. machine like that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Now another thing, and when you're looking at helmets, uh, again, most of the early issue stuff is stamped Japan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, fatigues or Japan t fatigues. They're the early fatigues. Mm -hmm. Now in this case, these guys all have pockets sewn, and so you can see. On the first issue pants, they actually had sewn pockets onto the pants, and there's these little square pockets that go down there. They they eliminated that later on, and they were just smooth. Were they functioning, or were they just stitched? They were just stitched. It was just okay. stitched to simulate a, a pocket. It wasn't a functioning pocket. Right. But gotcha. it's a way you can tell the early ones, as well as the Japan tag. So a Japan tag with the sewn pockets is a first issue. Because the shirts were tagged, but the pants weren't. Some of the pants were. Were they? Okay. So yeah, a few of the, some of the pants are tagged Japan, some are not. Okay. Um, I've seen I've seen sewn pockets on pants that didn't have a tag. Okay, okay. Don't know if they came out or they just didn't put them on there. Again, Production. Who, who knows how many pants went out of there and a guy said, hey, I don't want to put tags on these today and just sent them out of there. So well, Back in then, they yeah. just making product. I'm trying to get stuff out. Yep. Now, helmets uh, is another way you can tell on helmets. The early helmets are, are, are really big on the heads. They really fit, they're a larger they're huge, helmet. Right. The helmet went to a little bit smaller size after the early issue Joe's. Really? Okay. And the early issue helmets are also marked Hasbro Japan. Okay. And so if it's a Hasbro Japan, then it's a early issue helmet. Because okay. they dropped the Japan later on. Um, so that's right. one of the ways you can, you can tell that. Another uh, piece that's interesting are the rifles. The M1 rifles and the carbine. I brought two examples of what they call the uh, blue steel uh, yeah. coloring on the rifle. And the blue steel was an early color version. Um, and they're, they're highly desirable because they look so great. And these two are really nice and clean. But it's got that blue, yeah, kind of kind of blue, a little bit of a blue metallic look versus just the ordinary silver. Yeah, the silver is what I'm used to seeing. I've never seen Yeah, you can one. really see that. So that's some of the early issue. And I don't have an example of it here, but also a lot of some of the early issue rifles had the Hasbro instead of Hasbro Japan at the bottom. Uh -huh. The Hasbro is like mid stock. Really? Okay. And it's stamped in the middle of the stock and they call that the mid stock stamp. And that's also a very, very early, early issue. One. 
the, these are these are early, but that's even earlier where it's stamped. You can see the Hasbro stamped at the bottom right there. And they're all stamped Hasbro Japan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. right. Now some of these are stamped. This blue steel is stamped Hasbro with just a circle R. Okay. But the blue steel is a very desirable uh, color, and that came on a lot of the early issue pieces. Okay. And so that's how you can kind of tell with the rifle. Um, so those are some of the those are some of the uh, signs and ways to help identify that because it you know again I I, I look online at auctions all the time and right. they say oh. Uh, baby feet and you know and it's regular feet right they don't really know what the baby foot means or they say the beefy hands are the slotted shoulder well sometimes the regular slot they think oh that's a slotted shoulder right the slotted shoulder is a slot with a hole with the hole on the top with the yeah, big hole got the top and right, got that right, circular hole on the top, on top. Yeah. so that's some of the examples that i have in my collection there are other early issue uh, things like dog tags and things like that that I don't have examples of. But, right. but these are some of the basics, so the, the fatigues, the helmet, the boots, uh, some of the accessories, canteens, first aid kits, rifles, no, cartridge belts. So it gives uh, a person who may be new to collecting or a person that hasn't spent as much time. I mean, I've been collecting almost 35 years. Right. And uh, so you, over time, you talk to people, you talk to people that worked at Hasbro, I've been a lot of conventions and talk to you know, Sam Spears and, and Levine, Levine. Some, of the, some of the people who actually created it. And uh, you get a lot of information that you glean over that period of time. So I just want to share a little bit of that for people. So when you're going through a box of Joes, you never know when you're going to pop up on one of these heavy eyeliner Joes. This, yeah. this one I found in a box of stuff at a show, just the head. Really? It was like in a dollar box. And so what I'll do is I'll try to find an early issue body to put it on. Like these guys, some of these guys were created that way with parts. So even if you can't find one complete, you can find beefy hands, baby feet, and a raccoon head and put it on an early body. Now, another thing a lot of the early bodies had too, uh, they had brass rivets. Okay. Instead of the steel rivets. You'll see a lot of Joes that were played with outside and they'll be rusty. Mm -hmm. The brass rivets didn't rust like that. They just turned. Really? And I've actually had a couple of those and I polished them up and they've got like a, the, all these solid brass rivets. Now you'll see some that have partial brass rivets and regular, and then you'll see the ones that have all brass all rivets, brass and it's obviously an earlier figure. Really? Because they switch from the brass rivets to So were they brass rivets. and then painted, or are they just strictly brass? Brass and painted. Pa brass and painted. Yeah, brass okay. and painted. So they painted them, in, uh, and even with them painted, when the, ki when the kids played with them outside. They got them, worn out. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them get rusted. Yeah. You see a lot of rusted joints, but you can take a little Dremel, pull, a little dremel tool and just put a little uh, a polishing bit a little on there. Polishing you can bit. Even, yeah, you can even get that rust off of them. So. That's cool. Anyway, so those are some of the some of the things you can look for, and hopefully that'll help some folks when you're out uh, digging around in the boxes that shows and stuff like that, where you can uh, try to find some early issue figures. It's it's really cool because I mean, as a collector, like I said, I don't know as much about the '60s stuff, but um, I would, you know, I'm so used to seeing you know, this one and then seeing the bigger feet, and if I didn't know any better, you know, if I saw the cloth one, I think, well, maybe a grandma made it. Right. Or, you know, or a knockoff. Or it was a knockoff, you know. There were a lot of knockoffs back in the day. Buddy Charlie really and all those me. other guys, yeah. Yeah, I mean, as a matter of fact, for a long time, there was a rumor there was a green canteen holder. And it, and it was the, the, the green fatigue material. Really? And there was one, but it was a knockoff. It was a knockoff. Yeah, and for the longest time, people touted that as being a Hasbro piece, but it wasn't. It wasn't an early issue piece. They always sample. Yeah, Hasbro always made theirs out of tan. And the green one is a... Uh, it went with uh, Fighting Yank. Right. You see it in a lot of Fighting Yank cards. So yeah. it's nicely made. I have a green one on display with some of my Joes, and they look really good, but not an authentic Hasbro item. That's so. crazy. That's crazy. Well, awesome. Well, um, this concludes today's episode. Uh, um, if you like these videos that we've been showing, uh, we've done some with Ace, we've done one with David, uh, please comment um, below and let us know what you think. Uh, let us know what other videos you'd like us to do. Um, on the previous one with Ace, somebody said that they wanted us to do a video on dog tags, on the various dog tags with Adventure Team, with uh, the 1960s Joes, and dog tags from other countries. So uh, we, we put that in our pocket and we're gonna be working on that one in the future. But make sure you comment and let us know about it. I know we've so far we've received a lot of positives about it and uh, we're pretty excited about it. We're more than happy to get up here and, and talk about this stuff. I mean, we're, we're collectors, we're collectors, you know. But anyway, uh, make sure that you uh, like this video. Uh, make sure that you subscribe and uh, click on the bell to get uh, notices for further videos that are coming out. Until then, get out there and go collecting.